What is going on, everyone? Happy Vega launch day. I hope you are all doing well and had a fantastic weekend. I spent my entire weekend pretty much benchmarking RX Vega 56 and the GTX 1070. I initially started out testing Vega 56 and everything seemed to be going really well, but then there was a, another driver that was released out to the press, which kind of uh, ruined all of the numbers from the first one because the overclocking numbers that I was seeing were not accurate. So I had to go back and retest RX Vega 56 altogether on the driver that they gave us from the 11th that I didn't get until the 12th. And then there was one from the 7th that I had initially got with the card, with the press pack. So that basically that driver um, was no good if you're doing any sort of overclocking. So I had to redo everything because I did all of my testing with the RX Vega 56 and the GTX 1070 overclocked. As far as overclocking went on RX Vega, Vega 56, I wasn't able to get a huge overclock in what I was able to manually adjust. I was only able to put on an additional 2.5% frequency increase on the core. For the memory, which comes at 800 megahertz out of the box, which is effectively 1600 megahertz, I was able to raise that up to 900 megahertz, which would be 1800 megahertz effectively. So pretty good. I was happy that I was able to get the memory up by 100 megahertz and we got a little bit higher on the core clock as well. Now, most of my gains in the core clock actually came by just from increasing the power limit slider. I increased that by 50%, something that I've been having to do on RX cards ever since the 480s came out a while ago. So when I increased that by 50%, I actually saw the card jump from around 1425 megahertz all the way up to 1550 megahertz, which was a very nice bump just by increasing the power limit slider. And then on top of that, I was only able to get the 2.5%. So overclocking on the core saw me sitting around 1590 megahertz on the RX Vega 56, which is really not too bad considering the standard GPU clock is 1156 megahertz and it has a boost of 1471. So we got it up to around 1590 through all the testing and once again, 900 megahertz on the memory. My uh, GTX 1070, I also had that overclocked. It's the PNY card that you saw me unbox the other day in the Vega 56 hands-on overview. It's the uh, PNY Accelerate card, which I was able to put an additional 175 megahertz on the core for that and an additional 300 megahertz on the memory. So we regularly saw the core clock sitting around two gigahertz, which is what you'd expect to see pretty much on any 10 series card, 1060, 1070, or 1080 from NVIDIA. I've seen that in pretty much all of those cards that I have tested in the past. Temperatures were also pretty darn good on Vega 56. I did end up actually undervolting the card and I did raise up the fan speeds in Wattman. The uh, voltage initially in Wattman for the card was set at 1200. I dropped that down to 1100 and that saw my temperatures drop from around 83 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius. And while that didn't affect the, it didn't affect my core clocks negatively in any way, actually it helped them out quite a bit because the card was able to run cooler. Once the RX Vega 56 hits 85 degrees Celsius, it'll begin to downclock and throttle. So thankfully, because of the undervolting, I didn't see that issue come up at all. I was regularly, the highest peak that I saw was 75, 76 degrees Celsius, and it would pretty much stay between 70 to 75 through all of my benchmark testing. Even after running the Heaven benchmark for over an hour, it was sitting at 73 degrees Celsius. So really not too bad at all as far as the temperatures are concerned for a reference graphics card, as long as you do undervolt it. Obviously, once we get add-in board partner cards, or if you do your own liquid cooling on Vega 56, then you could expect probably even better temperatures than I was seeing here. For all of my benchmarking purposes, I was using my Frame Raider build, which you've seen featured on the channel countless numbers of times, but for people that may be new here, I'll go over the specs really quickly with you. It is running an i7-7700K, which I have overclocked to five gigahertz. So that should really give us one of the best testing scenarios possible as far as not bottlenecking the GPUs in any way. I've also got 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RAM in there with the XMP profile set to 3200 megahertz. The CPU is water-cooled. And uh, yeah, I was running a thousand watt power supply in there as well, which should help with the pretty big power demands of Vega 56, which is the TDP is at 210 watts. But if you're overclocking, you could probably expect that to get up even a little bit more. Unfortunately, I don't have any tools for testing the power draw from the wall, but yeah, you can expect Vega 56 to be using a bit more power than the GTX 1070, who has a TDP of 150 watts. Also, the 
1070 only has a single 8-pin power connector, whereas the Vega 56 card I was using had dual 8-pin power connectors. We'll have to see once add-in board partner cards come, if they're able to maybe improve on power efficiency and cut it down to an 8 plus 6 pin. I really just don't know yet, but my card had dual 8-pin power connectors, so it's likely drawing quite a bit of power from the wall on top of the 210-watt TDP. All right, so you got all the information there that we're going to need to get into the benchmarking. And I tested these cards both at 1080p and 1440p, which I think is probably the ideal resolution for both of these cards. If you'd like, me, like to see me go back and do 4K testing in the future, let me know down in the comments below. I'm already planning to do something with ultra wide testing, so stay tuned for that video probably in the next coming week. I just, you know, we had a really tight schedule here over the weekend to get these cards tested. So I only did 1080p and 1440p at the Ultra presets in all of the games that I tested. And I was just blown away with the performance that I was seeing on Vega 56. If you remember those rumors a couple weeks back that were saying that it was a 1070 killer, I can confirm that those are 100% true as you'll be seeing in the side-by-sides and the graphs that we'll get to in a moment. But some of these games, it was just absolutely stomping a mud hole into the GTX 1070 while actually winning by about 5 to 10 FPS in pretty much every title. In Rainbow Six Siege, it won by 141 to 114 average FPS at 1080p on Ultra. So really strong showing all the way across the board in the titles that I tested. Battlefield 1 was another game that it really just did exceptionally well and it got 129 average FPS at 1080p to the 118 average on the GTX 1070. But let's throw the graphs up there now so you can get a look at the full landscape of benchmarks here, starting off at 1080p with the average FPS, and then we'll get into the 1% low. Like I was saying there, you can see Battlefield 1, very strong showing here for RX Vega 56. Uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, it won there as well by 10 FPS. Ghost Recon Wildlands was actually a tie here at 1080p between these two cards, which is just interesting to see though, because if you know that some of these games are very favorable to NVIDIA cards, but even in those titles, AMD actually still took the lead here with Vega 56 up against the 1070. One of those titles is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, which just released. When I tested that on the 1060 and the RX 580, the 1060 won by 10 FPS, but here you could see the RX Vega 56 actually won by 1 FPS here, and if we see driver optimization in the future, as, we, as you guys know, AMD will probably be doing that good old fine wine technology. I would expect to see these numbers probably increase even more as time goes on for Vega 56. Uh, Overwatch was one of the only titles that the GTX 1070 won in addition to Player Unknown's Battleground. So in those two games, I saw better performance on the GTX 1070, but uh, Vega 56, every other title here, it just won uh, pretty decidedly and yeah, not really within the margin of error apart from just basically on Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice was within the margin of error, but everything else was a clean victory across the board. Moving over to the 1% lows now, that story continues where we can see the RX Vega 56 winning in pretty much every game here. It dropped down, to, it had a tie in Ghost Recon Wildlands again, just like it did in the averages. Uh, and Henua, uh, Henua, Hellblade, uh, Henua Sacrifice, uh, the 1070 did win by one uh, there in that particular game. And then Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Overwatch, it also took the lead in the 1% low of all frame times measured at 1080p on the Ultra preset. Moving into 1440p now, the story continues once again, where not really too much has changed here. We actually did see a tie in this one in Overwatch, but in all the other games besides Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, we saw victories for RX Vega 56. And here we go now into the 1% lows. You'll see that is echoed once more. So very strong showing here from AMD with RX Vega 56. You know how this is going to add up compared to Vega 64 up against the 1080. I'll have to find out later this week. I'm going to be going to pick up a Vega 64 tomorrow at Micro Center, who I've confirmed with they should have stock available when they open. So I'm going to go pick those cards up, that, well, I should say that card up. And as many people requested, I will be vlogging that trip. But very strong showing here. Once again, I'll say that for Vega 56. They have really done a number on the GTX 1070. You've got 8 gigabytes of HBM2, which is really awesome. And it's just 
performing better in all of these titles apart from Overwatch and Battlegrounds, but we might even see optimization for that in the coming weeks and months with better and updated drivers from AMD or Radeon. So really impressed uh, with Vega 56. I can absolutely recommend it to anyone out there that's looking for around a $400 graphics card. This is supposed to be retailing for $399. So yeah, very strong GPU for 1080p and 1440p gaming. Like I said, I will be benchmarking ultra-wide and probably 4K in the next coming week or so as I've got more time to play around with these cards. So if there's anything specific you'd like to see me test with Vega 56 or GTX 1070 in the coming week, please let me know down in the comments below as I'll be taking suggestions on future content where I can utilize these two graphics cards for more videos on the channel. If you enjoyed this review of Vega 56 and the showdown up against GTX 1070, show your support by sticking a like on this video down below and subscribing if you are new here. But if you have been here for a while and you want to find out whenever I'm uploading those new videos, the Vega 64 vs 1080 matchup as well as more content with Vega 56, then you can always hit that notification bell down below so you'll find out when I'm uploading those videos immediately and you'll never miss a moment of content. So. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I hope you guys all enjoy your week, and I will catch you in the next video. Sure.